I want to do tonight is I want us to look at the book of Acts. And uh, there's more in the book of Acts that I could uh, deal with. But the part that I want to deal with, uh, my theme, I'm not going to keep it a secret. My theme basically is prayer in the book of Acts. Uh, let me introduce it. With, you can turn to Acts chapter 1. We'll start at a very good place to begin. I'm going to turn to Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to put my Bible up there, and I'm going to tell you something. Um, This is an illustration. In the 1850s, the United States was in a weak spiritual state as people were preoccupied with other things than the things of God. In 1857, a quiet 46-year-old businessman named Jeremiah Lampier, or Lanfear, felt led to start a noontime weekly prayer meeting in New York City. Um, in this prayer meeting, business people would meet for prayer, and anyone could attend for a few minutes or for the entire hour. Uh, it was an open-ended you know, prayer meeting. Uh, on the first day, Lanfear prayed alone for half an hour. It was announced, and he was the one who showed up, so what did he do? He prayed. Have you ever come to pray and left because you were the only one? It only takes one of us to pray, okay? But... By the end of the hour, six men from at least four denominational backgrounds had joined him. Twenty came the next week, and forty the week after. Soon they decided to meet daily, and the group swelled to over 100. Pastors who came started morning prayer meetings in their own churches. Soon, similar meetings were being held all over New York City. No, all over the country. Um, within six months, there were more than 10,000 meetings daily in New York City alone. This was the start of what is now termed Tell me. The Great Awakening. Yeah, the Great Awakening. But it was a great revival. That's, that's, uh, it is estimated that in a two-year period, 1857 to 1859, two million people were led to Christ out of a population of 30 million. I would say... That was a productive prayer time. Now, I want to look at the book of Acts and just catch some of the things that are that I've got on my mind. And I'm not going to cover everything by, by any means. The book of Acts is filled with the early church praying. And as we see what happened as the early church prayed, as we see what happened as that group started praying in the 1850s, you see the value of prayer. God honors our prayers. Uh, Acts 1, and I'm going to begin with verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. 
which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Who was there? Well, it was Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brothers. Uh, what did they do? They prayed. Uh, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of names was about 120. And Peter said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that field is called in their own language, uh, Akei Dama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let this dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. They proposed two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own Place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, her own Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. He took the place of Judas. But what did they do to begin with? They prayed. What did they do before they chose Matthias? They prayed. As Sometimes read through the book of Acts and see the times that they prayed. They prayed when they were in trouble. They prayed when they were fearful. They prayed when they were making decisions. That they prayed. Uh, why were they in Jerusalem at this time? They were in Jerusalem at this time because Jesus told them. Okay, you, you go back to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. Uh, and just before this, they were on the Mount of Olivet and what happened? Jesus was taken up. And they, they watched him go. And there had to have been mixed emotions in that. There had to have been some sorrow in that, some grief in that, because here is their Lord, their supporter, their sustainer, being taken away from them. And it would have been very easy for them to have said, what's the use? What's the use? Our Lord is gone. He's taken away. 
But what did they do? They obeyed. Prayer without obedience, prayer without doing God's will, is going to be weak, ineffective. But because they were obedient, because they went back to Jerusalem to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit, they obeyed Christ. God honored their prayers. I think that when they were watching Jesus ascend, they must have just stood there for a while because they hadn't seen anything like that before. This is a first. They, they see their Lord ascending. And then they follow that with obedience. Now, as you read the book of Acts and you see how important prayer is in chapters 4 and 5, or 3 and 4, have have Peter and John going into the temple. They see the lame man there begging alms and they say silver and gold we don't have but such as we have we're going to give you. And they said in the name of Jesus rise and walk. And they indeed the lame man indeed rose and walked. What well, he you know, it was a miracle. It was nobody expected that man to to rise from that place to walk. He had been there for so long. And when they came into the temple, people started questioning, What? How did you do that? No, how how did you two men do this? And they did what they should have done. They, they, they don't, don't give us credit. It's Jesus who gets the credit for this. He's the one who um, gives, uh, it needs to be uh, praised. So as you look through the book of Acts, as you read the book of Acts, there's two types of prayers that this are evident. One of them is a persistence in prayer. Uh, they trusted Christ to hear their prayers and they were told not to teach or heal in the name of Jesus anymore. But they didn't listen. They said, if, who are we going to obey? Are we going to obey man or are we going to obey God? And they said, well, we're going to obey God. And they did just that. You know, after being told not to teach or preach or heal in the name of Jesus anymore, they went back to the other disciples and said, you know, we ought to pray and suggest to God that He do us a favor and take away this opposition that we're facing. They, they were much more bold than that. Uh, we look verse 23 of chapter 4. And being let go, they were being let go by the temple authorities, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God 
who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with, that with all boldness they may speak your words. By stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your, your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Uh, if they had not been obedient, if they had not been people of prayer, I don't think they would have had the boldness. Because the people that were opposing them were the very people that had crucified our Lord. It wasn't uh, a group of disinterested individuals it was a group it was people who did not want the church to grow did not want Jesus to be preached uh, and as you uh, we've only just begun in the book of Acts but in at this point they are obeying and they're praying Another time when they had the conflict within the church, the Grecian were saying, our widows are not being taken care of. What did they do? They prayed and sought God's wisdom and they chose deacons to minister. Peter was arrested and thrown into jail. The opposition was great. And what did the church do? They gathered together and prayed. And wonder of wonders, Peter was released by God. And he went to the home where his brothers and sisters in Christ were praying. <laughs> Knocked on the door and the girl came to the door and, who's there? Peter. Well, the girl said, that can't be. He's in jail. <laughs> but it was. You know, I, I wonder how many opportunities we miss being able to see God work in his miraculous way because we simply do not pray. I remember one time in my ministry when, I won't go into great detail on this, but there was something that it was a ministry of a, in a campground that I feel like the time was there for some greater things to be done through that campground. And there was an opposition to it because, uh, well, I won't go into the details of it because, but there was opposition to it 
because certain individuals didn't like the changes that that would bring. And the leadership, and I was among the leadership, the leadership allowed that handful of individuals to squash the leading of the Spirit. And as a result, for several years, the ministry of that campground did not grow as it should have grown. Instead of letting that opposition oppose and squash, we should have done something like this. Uh, this is another illustration that goes back into the 1800s. Daniel Nash and Charles Finney were great evangelists in the early 1800s. On one occasion when meetings had begun in a particular city, a group of young men confronted Charles Finney, openly announcing that they were going to break up the meetings. Finney and Nash decided this was best combated with prayer. So they found a grove of trees and gave themselves to prayer until, in Finney's words, we felt confident that no power which earth or hell could interpose would be allowed permanently to stop the revival. That night, the group of young men arrived to find a packed house to hear Finney preach. And Daniel Nash, who was ordinarily a quiet man, was sitting on the back row. He stood and faced them with these words. These were the, the, the opposition. Now mark me, young men. God will break your ranks in less than one week, either by converting some of you or by sending some of you to hell. Now I don't know exactly what that means to be sent to hell, but I... I, I but I don't want to be sent there, okay? Um, he will do this as certainly as the Lord is my God. Having said that, Nash dropped to his seat, bowed his head, and prayed. Finney admitted later that he thought his friend had gone too far. Yet, by the next Tuesday, the leader of the group suddenly showed up and in tears and confession, and put his faith in Christ. Before the week was out, almost all those young men were converted. I often wonder what would have happened if I or one of the other leaders had said, let's, let's pray. Let's seek God's wisdom. Let's seek God's guidance. And I don't know that I would have stood up and said, you know, boldly said, if you continue to oppose the work of this campground, God's going to get you. <laughs> but, and I'm happy to say that there's progress being made on that campground today but uh, it's been delayed by a number of years <laughs>